Hello. How is everybody? Okay, it's been a little while since I've been on here to talk about my sweaters, so this is going to be fun. Um, I have done some small knitting projects and some small crocheting projects and a few designing projects. So um, I've got a few things, finished objects to show you, and then we'll move into my sweater <laughs> catastrophe. I don't know what you call it. So um, I, I sent out a little survey a little while ago about knit and crochet dishcloths. Which one do you like prefer, prefer to use? I myself prefer to use knit and my husband prefers crocheted. Um, so I was just kind of wondering about what you, how you guys feel about it. And um, so I did get a bit of a response. So I'm gonna kind of show some of the things, some of the ones that I did. Um, I was never a knitter. I was more of a crocheter and I didn't know the difference between the textures of the, of the knit washcloth and the crochet washcloth until <clears throat> I was on jury duty and one of the other jurors actually knitted. So she actually knit every one of us a handmade um, dishcloth and then gave them to us at the, end, at the last day of the trial, um, which was so sweet of her. And that was my first introduction to knit dishcloths. I held on to that. I just, I thought it was so sweet and it was such a, a nice thing for somebody to do that I, I never used it. I held on to it and held on to it and held on to it. And then one day I finally broke down and started using it and it was my absolute favorite dishcloth. Um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, I don't knit very often so, or back then I didn't knit at all. I had knit a baby blanket and I believe it was like in garter stitch. So when I picked it up, it went, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so it was the very first thing that I knit and I could see, uh, I don't really remember whatever happened to that blanket, but I was really disappointed in the texture and I'm sure it was, it was just the type of yarn and then the size of needles that I used was probably inappropriate. It was just garter stitch, which is stretchy anyways because I'd never done it before and I really didn't have, I don't, didn't have anybody to guide me in it. Um, so crochet's always been my thing because I had somebody when I was probably, I want to say eight years old, show me how to make a granny square. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it was just a simple four, four edge granny square, double crochet, um, double, uh, two, two chain, two chain corners. And that is the only thing I knew about crocheting until, let's see, I had my first daughter and then I started going to the library and I found a couple of uh, DVDs, no, VCRs, VCR tapes that had some uh, shows on there that showed you some of the, some stitches. So I started watching all of those and I'd go to the library and that's why, you know, I, I go to the library all the time. I can get free prop, free patterns there, um, and it helps you. St you can stay current because they get out all the new books. It's not like you have to stay in all the old vintage type of stuff that's free online. So um, I highly recommend that if you guys, well, you guys have YouTube now. So, um, but that was my story, and I I absolutely love a knitted dishcloth, and I just started doing them again. So my absolute favorite one that I did was this one. And this is called, uh, I believe it was not your grandmother's dishcloth or maybe it was grandma's, grandma's dishcloth. I don't remember, but it, I just fell in love with this one. It was so cute. And this is actually one of the first ones that I made. And it looks like it's just so hard to do, but it was so easy. I used to make these when we'd go out to the property. So we'd be sitting in the truck for a while with the kids in the back. And I would just start working on it if my husband drives us up there. So this is one of my favorites. And then it had a little one here, for here, is a, is a face cloth. So it's, that would make the super cute bath set, wouldn't it? Hmm. And I, this is in, this is in, um, not I Love This Cotton, it's in the other one. Peaches and Cream. So, and it feels really nice. Anytime that I've done crochet with peaches and cream it's just always so stiff and hard it's, it's definitely a kitchen a kitchen yarn 
I feel that it's a kitchen yarn because of how stiff and thick it is. Um, these are super thick. These are fantastic. To where when I knit with the, the I Love This Cotton, it doesn't knit up as thick as that. So there's a difference between the two. So if you're looking for something that's a, a durable kitchen type uh, yarn, you're definitely going to go with that. The cream. Definitely a kitchen. Okay. So if you're going to make... Um, washcloths or that kind of a, a product, I would suggest you use the I Love This Cotton. Oops, sorry about that. It makes a much softer product. And it also um, kind of flows a little better. And I'll show you what I mean with the other two, um, the other cloths that I made. So this is I Love This Cotton, but you see how it just, the way it folds and it just hangs nice. The fabric is just so soft. I don't know if you can see them, but they've got hearts in them. This would make a beautiful baby blanket, by the way, this pattern. I'm going to link it below in case anybody's interested. It's not upside down. It sure is. Let me get this closer to you. We've got a subtle heart in there. Just the bumps. Just the back side of the pearl stitch. So cute. Anyways, I will link that pattern in there because I think that'll make a beautiful baby blanket if anybody's interested or is looking for a pattern for a baby blanket. Um, and then I use my dishcloths to practice to practice um, different stitches and techniques. So again, this is the another one. It says love on it. So this one I had an issue. I had knit these that line up there above. I had um, purled what I was supposed to knit, so then I took it, backed it off, and then then I did the, the stitch that I was supposed to stitch, but look, that it doesn't come out now, so I'm not sure if I twisted it. I don't see a twist. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I'm assuming it's a twist. Maybe you can see it on the back. No, not really. Can you see that? If anybody knows what I did, if you can see that and they know what I did, please let me know. Um, if it's a simple twist and a way to avoid that in the future. Because I really thought, I even looked at it when I was making it to make sure that the, that the legs were going the right way. And they were, so I'm really kind of surprised at what happened here. So not exactly sure what happened, but again, that's why I do dishcloths because it makes it um, so much um, easier to take when you have to fix a problem or and or realize that you've messed something up. Okay, so again, like I said, I do knit and crochet my dishcloth so that I can learn different different techniques. If you guys, this is a gingham pattern, so you can tur turn around and make this a blanket. So once you've made your dishcloth, you just turn it in, make it bigger, change your colors, and make it or keep the colors the same. Either way, and then I did the simple simple knit with a uh, crochet. So I'm going to show you what I meant about the um, the knit is so so stretchy and soft to where the knit the crochet is very stiff. So even in the dishcloth it's very stiff but again some people like that. I prefer this one here and then my husband prefers the dishcloth. Making your own dishcloth also is really nice because you can make them any size that you want. My husband's hands, he likes the smaller ones um, because his, it hurts his hand to squeeze. So that's always fun. Being a crocheter and a knitter, we're able to do that for ourselves. So here's one of my new designs for Valentine's Day. Super cute. Okay. And another one. So um, I haven't really, what did I do with those? I haven't written the pattern up. All I have is my my doodles and my my blocks kind of blocking it out. So if anybody was interested in like that pattern and wanted to make them themselves if they didn't know they didn't know how to do it, I can write that up and actually do a tutorial on it if anybody's interested, but you got to tell me because I'm not going to waste my time. We have so many great designers out there and people that are already doing this um that I'd rather just direct you to somebody that already has one made. But again, you know, I made these ones, so I would have to do my own. Okay, 
So that is what I've got that's new. And, no, not all of it. New and finished. So you guys know that I made these for my daughter for Christmas, right? They're nice, soft little scrubbies. She gets those weird little bumps on there and she likes to use them to exfoliate her skin. Now, when I made these, I told you guys there were a difference between the tool and the netting, okay? So I use tool and I use the whole roll, which makes it actually pretty soft. So it's got a nice little roughness to it, but it's not so rough that it's gonna rip your skin apart. So let me show you what the difference is. So the, the one, the um, netting I use in for dishes, okay? So these are the ones that I would use for my dishwasher, okay? So these, here's the difference in them. I'm not sure if you can see the difference in the texture, but I'll show you in the netting when I pull it out. Again, this is another one of my patterns. Let me show you, and you can see how rough it is. You can even hear how rough it is, okay? So let me show you the difference in those for in case you decide that you want to do something like that. So the one that I use for the skin is a nice, soft, small hold tool. Kind of for tutus and those kind of things. You can see. It's nice, it's lightweight. And then the ones that I use for my dishcloths are a net. So let's see, can you see the difference in how big those squares are and how rough it is? So dishes, you want to use this net. And then for anything that you're going to use on your skin, you want to get the, the tool. I just want to put that out there because I had made these and had mentioned it. So I thought I'd throw that out there at you. Okay, so is that my finished objects? I believe that's all the finished objects. So I did my dishcloths and then I've got some, some little scrub, um, some dish scrubbies finished and then my designs okay so now my whips my first whip is going to be my my um sweaters so i haven't gotten very far i mentioned in my last video that my hands have been bothering me so um it's not like i haven't done anything but i just haven't been i'm not as far as i would have liked to be so this is where I am with my crochet one. Get down to that second color. I'm two rows away from changing my colors again. I'm done over the sleeves. Um, when I tried this on, you can see this. But when I tried it on, I know it has a three to five inch ease, but it seemed to be real baggy in the back, but now that I've got a little more weight on it, it's pulling it down and I think it's gonna hang really nice. But that is my crochet one. I don't know, do you think that color's pulling enough of that blue out of the, and then it's gonna be that deeper blue down here on the bottom and hopefully pull some more of that color out. Okay, so this was the MJ's MJ off the hook design um, and it's the Rocky Mountain color block sweater if you guys are interested totally different colors in a size one yarn it's a hand dyed yarn size one and it is 100% um, superwash merino wool and it's from Hobby Lobby. So this was very cost. Um, it was $13.99 a skein. And I bought four skeins. And I'm really hoping that I don't have to go back and try to find another one. But I'm thinking it's going to be okay. I think I'm good. So, because I do have... The blue is actually a smaller section, the dark blue. And I do have two, another big size ball. I don't want to pull it out because it's going to collapse on itself. So that's where I am on the Rocky Mountain MJ off the hook design. Um, I will link these patterns if you guys are interested and um, didn't want to go back and look at the, the other ones down below in the description box. So I don't know if you guys seen my little reel that I did, 
but on my knit prairie sweater i was knitting along and and got about i don't know two or two to three inches into it and realized i had a big hole right in the chest of it and i didn't know what i did so i just went online and i was looking it up and i thought maybe i dropped a stitch maybe it was a tuck stitch i don't even know what it, you know i just had heard those terms so i looked them up and it wasn't either one of those which was kind of a little too bad which meant i had to unravel all two and a half inches if i can i, I don't have a very good um editing software so but if I can, I will put that little clip in here so you guys can see what I'm talking about and how much I had to take off. Um, but I just unraveled it. I put it on a table and just pulled it out to where it was. And then when I got down there, I seen what I had done was um, when I, it's such a big needle that when I was knitting, I actually knit into the top loop and the bottom loop at the same time. So I took these two and I knit this one and then I knit this one because it was it was just sitting weird. So I had to undo it all the way to that and take it out, um, just creating an extra stitch and then creating a hole in the product or in my sweater. But uh, needless to say, I did fix it. And I'm ready to show you guys where I am. This one's moved along a little bit faster because it's a remember it's a bulky, a bulky yarn. Um, so this is where I am. Let's see if you guys can see it. I finished the whole body of it. I'm at the sleeves. I'm really hoping that uh, that's just a string. That these will come out. It kind of looks like a design in it. And it's fitting. It fits really nice. I'm super happy with it. So here's my next problem. I went, I thought I had enough yarn, but I did not take into account, which I didn't know I needed to, but until I started doing this, sorry, but my sweater or the shirt underneath is sticking to me. Okay. I'm over that. So I didn't take into account the fact that this cotton is not stretchy. And I'm pretty sure that the wool that was, it was supposed to be made out of is stretchy. And so therefore, um, it also doesn't have, it's a very, it turned out to be a very dense, dense fabric and it's not flowy. So anyways, I think I ate up more yarn because of the type of yarn that it is. So this is what I have left for yarn. So I did do a little bit of my sleeve, like eight rows of each sleeve. Um, and then I stopped and I went to the store to get another skein. Lo and behold, they had every color except my oatmeal. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do. If I can find another oatmeal, I can always, I was kind of thinking I could color block because I'm doing the color block sweater. I could color block a different color onto the yarn, um, but that's not the design of the sweater. Uh, so what I did is if I do not find it, there's another Hobby Lobby that I can try and then I can also try online, which I have not done those things yet. So, um, what I have are these two little balls here on the end and then this here. So I tore apart the, um, my swatch. Now give me a couple more rows. And the reason that I did that is because when I put it on, it's a super cute short sleeve sweater. So um, if I were to stop now, I think it would be super cute. But because of the material that I used, it's such a heavy, dense fabric. I think it'd look kind of silly. I'm not sure yet. But if I do not find any yarn, I think I'm just going to leave it. Or if I don't find any more of this color, I'm going to leave it short sleeve. I'm going to attach each one of those balls. I separate it for as much as I can for each one. And I'm just going to take the sleeve down. So right now it sits here. So it will probably give me another at least two inches with the amount of yarn that I have left on each one. These are exactly the same. I made sure that they were the same to see how far I would get with what I had. Um, so that's where I am with this one. So if anybody knows the reason that I ran out of yarn, um, 
and if it's different from what I thought, or maybe you can let me know if I'm correct in the in what I was thinking as to why I ran out of yarn is because of the type of material that I chose. Um, let me know in the comments because, like I said, this is my first sweater and I really thought I was going to have more than enough yarn and now I'm two sleeves short. Or maybe I calculated it wrong. So if you let me know um, what I did. So my two balls... Let's see. We're ten and a half ounces at three hundred and three yards each skin. I had I had two. And the pattern called for. Where did I leave my pattern? Well, I guess I'm gonna have to check that a little bit later because I don't know what I did with my pattern. Um but I'm pretty sure I had the amount of yarn and then a few, some yard yardage left over. But I'm gonna double check that and I'll let you guys know. And then I'll let you guys know what I ended, well, I'll show it to you. I'll let you know what I, what happened with it. But I'm almost done, super exciting. This one's like really close to being done. The Rocky Mountain uh, color block sweater is gonna take a little longer because it's in the numbers. It's one, one size yarn, but it's, oh my gosh. It is so, nice the fabric is so nice you know i thought this was gonna be a winter sweater but man it's it's so lightweight and it just feels feels good so i think this is gonna be spring um it's gonna be fall i'm probably gonna use it all the time like i said i wasn't too sure about all these splotches because it's not really my style but it just, it's such a nice sweater and I think it's really starting to come together. We'll see. We'll see what that dark blue, if it'll pull it out. Okay, so there you go. That's the update on my sweaters. What else did I have? Oh, how about we move into things that I've recently acquired. So remember I told you I had a Mary Maxim order come in. I have joined their, their sock of its, their sock club. So it is um, every three months, and I think it's seventeen dollars. I think it's twelve ninety nine plus shipping, so it ended up being seventeen dollars. So it finally came. It was stuck in traffic forever, but uh, it did make it. Yeah. So the actual club price is twelve ninety nine a quarter, and then it's a four ninety nine um, shipping. So it cost me seventeen ninety eight. Which is a bad thing. I don't do a lot of socks. So here's here's the thing. Remember I got those knitting needles to give it a try. When I finish my other socks, this would be the sock yarn. So these ones might sit for a while because these oh that's beautiful, isn't it? I love the color. But the size, it's a number three. It's an Aran Superwash Wool Nylon. So what is an Aran? Usually my tags tell me what they are. But it looks to me like it's a three. Like the baby size yarn. You can get a dark blue one so you can see it better. But anyways, it's beautiful yarn. We got two of them. They are seventy percent superwash wool, thirty percent nylon. They're hundred grams each, so three and a half ounces for each one. So it came with these. It came with this nice project bag. It's a zipper. Keep it clean store it for a little while and then it also came with a pattern so this is going to be a, this is a weekend sock not sure i like the pattern of the um sock the way they done it again i'm not a big pattern person 
Um, but it's interesting the way they did these socks, and they'll knit, they'll knit up so much faster because they're in a bulkier weight yarn. So we'll give those a try. I'm just not going to be able to do them on my new on my new nine inch needles. So oh look at that, they've got a nice little pocket for your pattern too. Cute. That works out good. Okay, so that's something that I just got. I think that's the only thing new because I did not get any yarn because they were they were out of my yarn. So I'm going to move into. I'm gonna move into some stuff that's coming up. I did. I posted a video. If you guys haven't seen it, go back. It's um, on some of the, a couple of the crochet alongs, year-long crochet alongs that are going on. That sounded really fun. So the first one that I did, um, that I think I'm gonna join is probably gonna be the Jada and Stitches. So I have an oatmeal color that I thought I was gonna use with some pinks. Um, and this is this is the yarn. I think I showed it to you guys. It was a an item that I that I had to recycle the yarn. So it's a number four acrylic yarn in oatmeal. Okay. So then she dropped the pattern. Um, so I was looking for this yarn and I couldn't find it. I didn't know what I did with it. No, I mean that's a lot of yarn to lose. But it was it just in like four of these totes were stacked together and then it was stuffed into one of my cubbies. Um, so I couldn't find it. So then I didn't know what I was going to do, but I, then I got it out and I'm thinking, oh, well, that's just going to be too dark for, um, the other colors. And I'm not sure what the patterns are going to be, but upon my mission or my searching of that, I came across an old, very old project that I started. And this thing has been sitting around for, I don't even know how long, but it was another blanket that I had started and it was knitting. And I figured, oh my gosh, I'm going to start knitting that. I'm just going to finish that blanket. Well, these needles and the project is like, let me show it to you. So this is it. It's super cute. So it's got the pearl and then the knit blocks for the pattern. And then it has the, you know what? I don't even have the pattern anymore. I remember there were tassels on it and then there was an edge on it. But I was, anyways, I started knitting it and it's like, this is so uncomfortable. <clears throat> so I was thinking of putting a, I'm kind of looking through it and I see in the beginning, I see some mistakes that I made. And I was thinking, oh, well, you know, that'll be okay because it's, you know, I can say this is my first blanket and this is how it evolved. But uh, these needles, trying to do it this way is just cumbersome. Um, and I already have another project. But anyways, I was thinking I have all of this yarn. And I'm thinking this might be a way better neutral base than this. for the crochet along. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use this Erin. It's a, uh, it'll get some more yarn out of my stash that's been laying around. Uh, it'll give me an opportunity to recycle this yarn. It's very light though. Um, it's just these needles are cumbersome. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna do her, if anybody has not checked it out yet, she did her drop on Friday. Um, and it's super cute. It is, I thought it was going to be a graph gown, but she's actually doing Intarnesia. Is that what it's called? No, Fair Isle. She's doing Fair Isle crochet. So um, it's, her technique is fantastic. Um, you don't have to carry most Fair Isle. You carry your floats in the back. Um, so there's nothing floating and it's reversible so you can see the pattern on both sides. So it is a super, super cute project. So I think I'm going to use that. And then you have to have a minimum of two, two colors, the light color and the dark color. Um, but her pattern and what she's doing 
It's making me think that I'm going to be able to use a lot of my scraps. Uh, be able to get some of that out of there. And then you guys saw all that yarn that I got the last haul that um, a friend gave me. So I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm thinking I'm going to um, use my Addy machines and I'm going to crank up some kids hats and then donate them to the schools for this um, this winter season and then spring. Um, you know, the kids always forget their hats or they lose them or they're left out on the playground or so on and so on and so on. Um, so I'm going to do that. I think I've got all that blue yarn. I've got that black and white yarn. Um, I received some orange yarn. Um, so I'm going to do that as well. And then one other thing I was talking to you guys about. I showed you the wrong yarn in the last video. This is the yarn that is the 100% wool. I showed you that other orange one, but that was acrylic. This is the wool. Okay, so this, I've got two of them. Look at that green in there. That's like the new hot green, I think. Kind of an army green. So I've got two of them, so I'm hoping to be able to get my mittens. The um, mittens that I made everybody for Christmas. I'm going to make the female version of it and a hat. So that is also another future project that I'm going to do. 100% wool. Um, it's going to be a little different. The other wool that I used was natural, so I'm not sure how they got. They had to have dyed it. 100% pure virgin wool, tangle proof, Coates and Clark. Anyways, it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully it works. Those colors are actually really cute. You know, I actually have until fall. These are such fall colors. I really feel that I have until fall to do this. So I think I put that one on the back burner for a little while, especially with those crochet alongs. The other crochet along that I was looking at was the one from the Ruby Lamb. Um, if you guys are into Amagurumi, it's going to be so cute. It's an advent calendar. So check her out. It's the Loopy Lamb. Um, that's one of the, the ones I'm going to be doing this year. It's a year long, so you're doing a little bit at a time, a week at a time. And it, so is Jada and Stitches. Her, um, her uh, calendar blanket is going to be a year long as well. So that's a couple of long ones. It'll give me something to work on every day or every, every week without it being too overwhelming, along with my sweaters that I'm doing. So once these are done, I have until January, February, March to finish both of these sweaters and then move into my next set of sweaters. Um, by the end of the year, I will have, I will have eight sweaters. So that'll be fun. Okay, I think that's it. Let me know if you guys are gonna be joining me in any of these um, crochet, crochet alongs that I had mentioned here and or I will um, link the one, the, um, video that tell, that talks about them and gives you all the information. Um, I will link that in um, at the end of the video. So so wait for that. And then let me know what you think of that, those two different colors. I'm thinking the lighter one to go with all the colors, especially if you guys go and look at it because she's done her drop. Um, I don't want to really give anything away until, um, but I'm thinking I'm going to go with the lighter one. You guys go take a peek and then let me know what you think. If, I, if you think I can get away with this, uh, this oatmeal, darker color, or if you think I should do this Aaron color. Okay. I am finished talking for today. It seems like that's all I've done is talk. We had some guests over, so I was chatty Kathy. So, and then I became chatty Kathy with you guys. I'm not sure how long this video is. I'm going to have to cut a little bit of it off, but, uh. You guys have a fantastic week, and hopefully I'll be done with my at least one of my sweaters next week and moving towards um, some of the other ones. All right, you guys, have a fabulous week.